This Dying Light 2 DLC was leaked. Allegedly, of course. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone! I'm the Global Cherry, and today I will be discussing recent significant changes to Dying Light 2, as well as a new leak for the DLC story. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <laughs> When Dying Light 2 was released, Techland had to face chase levels, not from volatiles, no no no, but from a very dissatisfied Dying Light community. However, from the new Nightrunner missions from ex Nightrunner Harper, the Volatile Hives, the Tyrant Volatiles, the E3 outfits return, and other changes, players like myself have a reason to return to the game again. I trust you won't fail me. Now get out there and show me what you can do. New changes were brought to the game in a recent patch update 1.4.2, addressing the game's most severe technical bugs and issues. I can't run for some reason! Most of the fast travel issues are fixed. Players will no longer have their game crash in co-op from using any stab follow-up abilities. The new Tyrant Volatile Zombies added to Dying Light 2 are now much stronger than before. Techland must have given them their own boosters to level out the playing field since they are now harder to kill. Special infected types are also receiving a boost to their resistance from certain types of damage. Those that are designated with an orange marker should be able to draw mutation samples, which are needed for certain quest lines. This is a great opportunity for us to ask the infected respectively for their tissue, and forcefully take it from them. It's for a great cause after all. The E3 2019 outfit and the Elite Nightrunner outfit. Dying Light 2's new update also brought minor elements to the game, fixing softlock during a parkour challenge and allowing players to transfer their outfits, including those from the Harper event, to New Game Plus. Now I'll be talking about what you came for, the DLC leak. In one of my previous Dying Light 2 videos, I analyzed a 40-page leaked dialogue where Aiden fights for survival in the opera. Thanks to the OP data miner Bub, we have more insight on what to expect for the DLC. Each time Timon sees a leak, he probably reacts this way. Hey, it's good to see you too. The new leak features the interior and exterior of the Opera House, showing how massive the arena is. This could mean that the story DLC will mainly take place at Opera Astrid, the largest battle arena in town. Someone tipped Aiden off about this peculiar Opera House, and Aiden Caldwell had to check this place out for himself. He worked his way up in smaller city arenas, collecting flags to become one of the Opera Gladiators. As Aiden, we must bring glory to our name by participating in arena challenges to advance in rankings and progress further in the storyline. By winning challenges, players will be able to get better upgrades and weapons. Also, you have the best craft masters in town to provide you with essential equipment you need. How much time do I have? You don't blow any second. Run! What? In the arena, Aiden will encounter three main characters in his adventure at the Opera House. Astrid is the leader of the Opera House. Abel is the strongest gladiator in the opera who goes by his gladiator alias. Skull Face. Huh, sounds like someone's gamer tag. He is Astrid's left-hand man, and his unpredictability, brutality, and adept strength wins him adoration from the bloodthirsty crowd. Ogar is a former 50-year-old opera champion who has a strong hatred for Astrid due to her betrayal. Chirio, I mean Chiro, is Ogar's stepson, who will be Aiden's friend in the DLC. He has a dream to become an opera gladiator champion. Seeing how his role is similar to Hakon's makes me think their friendship could be very complicated. In a leaked screenplay, he and Aiden drink to a successful fight in the arena, and Chiro dreams to become a champion. Gas canisters are thrown into the room, and all the lights shut off, UV lamps included. The audience panics in distress, and Aiden and Chiro pass out from the gas. Aiden wakes up to Skullface and two other gladiators choosing potential candidates that are fit to fight among the civilians. A craftmaster volunteers himself, but is berated as a weakling. He accuses Skullface of murdering the missing chosen warriors, so Skullface took matters into his own hands. He turned the Craftmaster into a human pinata by beating him repeatedly with a gong hammer. Skullface sees Aiden and praises him for his strength in the arena. He takes away Aiden's electric shield and challenges him to a battle. Aiden is still dazed from the gas, giving Skullface an advantage to attack him and block him with his own shield. After losing the last shred of dignity he had left, Skullface knocks him out. 
This DLC will be story driven with two possible endings. I am assuming he will have to make a choice between siding with Astrid or continuously aiding Ogar and Chiro. There will be about 2,000 lines of dialogue within this game as well as 1,000 stage directions. In this beautiful arena, there will be an entrance hall, a vestibule, warrior's quarters to train for your next fight, and a basement that could be a dark zone. Within the basement, there will be a prison that houses a ton of infected, enough to give anyone nightmare fuel. Overall, this leak gave me the impression that this DLC has a ton of potential. What do you think about this DLC leak, and what do you hope they'll add to the DLC? Leave your comments below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to join the family for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and that's all. Yeah.